Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World weapon guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Karma Light Bowgun. The Karma Light Bowgun is a rarity 8 weapon that you can build with parts from Odo Garen. And one of the reasons we're going to be taking a look at it is because you can actually build it. You see it competes with another light bowgun called the Terrath Blitz Shot. Now Terrath Blitz Shot, or Blitz Shots I'm just going to call it. Uh, by the way I have a video on it if you're curious about that, if you want to see a guide for that. The problem with that light bowgun is you really rely on Kolv Terroth actually dropping it for you. With Karma, you can just go build it. With the Terrath Blitz shot, it actually has to drop from you, and it's a rarity 8 drop, so it's really hard to obtain it. So if you've been wanting to use a great gun that has normal ammo to rapid fire, your next best option is the Karma Light Bowgun. And you know what? One, it looks really cool, and two, it's actually not that bad in a group because even though it's dealing less damage per shot than the Terrath Blitz shot, it comes with the sleep ailment, it comes with the paralysis ailment, and we know those ailments are especially useful in a team because, yes, it takes one person to put the monster to sleep or to paralyze the monster, but the whole team, four people, benefits from it. So those ailments are nice to have. It's not going to beat out Terrath Blitz shots in, a, in like a speed run, but it's still going to be very useful when we're talking about playing on a team. All right, well, as usual, let's go ahead and start talking about the weapon's attributes. So the first thing we notice is that it's rarity eight, and that gives us one augmentation slot. I'm gonna recommend spending it on either affinity or health regen. You don't wanna spend it on attack, because when you're dealing with like a light bow gun, if you try to do an attack augmentation, you really don't get that much. You get like seven more points of attack, which is really low. So affinity's good, and health regen's good in this case. Next, you'll notice it does already have a starting affinity of 30%, which is really high. And basically what you're going to be doing with this weapon is you're going to want to reach 100% affinity with the weakness exploit, of course. And this will allow you to get 100% crit shots as you're shooting the monster like in his face, right? And that's one of the ways that Karma tries to compete with a weapon like the Terrath Blitz shot. Terrath Blitz shot is gonna have higher raw, but not every one of its shots is going to be a crit. So Karma tries to catch up with it by always having a crit shot in there, right? Next, we'll notice it has one small decoration slot. You know, uh, that's just not as good as Terra Split Shot's rank three decoration slot, right? Terra Split Shot's rank three decoration means that you can fit a, a four shot decoration in there. With Karma, you know, a small, you, you, I guess you're gonna add in like an attack jewel or an expert jewel, but you're, you're not gonna get that much out of a small slot. Then it's deviation is none. That's nice, it's not really important. For custom mods, you'll notice I went with close range up times three, and this is because the normal ammo already has good attributes. It already has low recoil and fast reload speed which is what you want on your ammo types, right? So we're able to get away with three close range up mods, and that means when you get close to the monster, you're gonna get a nice bonus to your damage, which is what I recommend. All right, and of course the special ammo type is Wyvern Blast, because all light bow guns have Wyvern Blast. Let's move on to taking a look at the ammo types. All right, so as I said earlier, this is going to be a normal ammo to light bow gun, and we know that because of the attributes, right? So you can see that it comes with recoil plus two and reload that is normal speed, right? And then the rapid fire, of course, makes the normal ammo two stronger than normal ammo three or about as, as, as damaging as normal ammo three. But of course, Karma doesn't actually have normal ammo three. The other thing you'll notice is with the pierce ammo, the recoil is really too high and the reload speed is slow. So we're not interested in the pierce ammo. And then same with the spread ammo, there's no rapid fire on like the spread ammo two. So we're not really interested in that either. The sticky ammo level one, you know, that's going to be a big waste of your time. Don't worry about that. You do have poison ammo. Poison ammo is not that strong, but I mean, it's definitely easy, so I would at least bring it, uh, especially for monsters like Kushala de Aura. You can poison them one time and then never think about it again. Paralysis ammo is excellent. Paralysis Paralysis ammo is excellent. That is a very good ailment to have with the light bowgun. Same with the sleep, it, you know, kind of depends on if you're, you've got like a teammates that are going to cooperate with you when you put the monster to sleep because you really want the person with the strongest attack to really wake the monster up. But you get a lot of dumb teammates who wake the monster up with nothing, right? <laughs> That's just how it goes. But the paralysis ammo is really good. And the sleep ammo, it's kind of like a worse paralysis ammo when you're playing with randoms. When you're playing with people you know, it's actually pretty good because you can communicate to people that you're putting the monster to sleep, which by the way, if you're playing with randoms, you can actually assign to the radio menu a message that says something like, I'm putting the monster to sleep, which is what I do when I'm using sleep ammo. Now it also has exhaust ammo. 
I don't really see the usefulness in that. I've tried it all sorts of different ways, and it always seems like a waste of time. There's also Thunder Ammo, but this light bow gun doesn't really compete with the Sticks light bow gun for Thunder Ammo, so I wouldn't worry about that. Gets one shot of slicing, that's terrible. And then there's Demon Trank. I'll let you guys play around with that if you feel like it. Okay, and now it's time to take a look at the builds. You know, last video I did on the Terrath Blitz shots, I did three builds. They were different tiers for like different levels of decorations that you guys might have, and you guys give me some great feedback on that. I'm also going to be doing more than three builds this time, and that's because I realized, you know, why don't we just cover all of the possible builds that you would probably consider for this weapon. So the first one is a cosplay build using the Odo Garen armor set. It's a very cool looking set. You'll notice whenever I play the game, I always open up the intro with a, a cosplay build using the weapon that I'm about to talk about. That's because it's a lot of fun to use the cosplay builds, even if you just do it like once or twice, right? In this case, the Odo Garen set does not help the light bow gun pretty much at all other than like two levels of expert on the Odogaran coil, and then it doesn't really hold that many decorations either. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend for an Odogaran cosplay is to bring the Awakening Charm level two. This is going to bring the ammo up skill to level two, which is really all you need for the normal ammo level two, right? So free element slash ammo up level two does affect normal ammo level two. It wouldn't affect normal ammo level three. You would need one more level to affect that, but you only need level two ammo up. And then after that, I just throw on a bunch of expert jewels. It, I guess it could have been four attack jewels. I have those, but I don't think most people have that. And I have two levels of tenderizer. That could have been two levels of maximum might, but it turns out tenderizer at level two, as long as you're landing headshots, actually deals more affinity than the two levels of maximum might. Okay, so, uh, you know, it just mix and match whatever you want. Nothing that you put on the build is going to be too dramatic. <laughs> You know, it's not going to make the, the build too powerful one way or the other. Just do whatever makes sense. All right, let's move on to taking a look at the next armor set. This armor set, I'm going to be calling it Tier 1. It's the lowest level armor set, and it doesn't come with any decorations at all. So I try to put as much as I can on the build just using armor sets. And one of the things people asked me to do is not to use pieces of any Gamma armor set. So we're not going to be taking that into account either. And here's what I have. I have Attack Boost 4, Free Element 2, Weakness Exploit 2, Agitator 2, Maximum Might 2, normal shots, and hasten recovery. So this is actually a pretty good build. It mimics the one I did for the Terra the Blitz shots. You'll notice you do have three small decoration slots available. You can put Miasma gems in there, or you could put like Vitality gems in there. And then you have two level two decoration slots, which you could put like one more level of weakness exploit. You could try to put one more level of maximum might in there. So that's probably what I would do with those. What's so interesting about this build is that I actually got attack boost four without any decorations. So you really are able to do that. And the hasten recovery will act as kind of like a health recovery augment if you're not actually able to augment this light bow gun. So this is actually a really fun, very cheap build to use. And uh, yeah, I think you guys will enjoy this one. All right, for the tier two build, you'll notice I, I went with a little bit of a different strategy this time than I did last time. This time, I don't require you to have like three tenderizer jewels, which I think is pretty unreasonable. What I've done instead this time is I've put it together with the vanilla armor sets. And you'll notice I have one tenderizer jewel, one mighty jewel, and one critical jewel. Now it's gonna be okay if you don't have that. If you're missing a tenderizer jewel or you're missing a mighty jewel or you're missing a critical jewel. The point of this build is that unlike the tier one build, we're actually building toward crit boost. And even if you can only afford crit boost level two with the Kolv Tarathas Ire Alpha armor piece, that's still gonna be stronger than the original setup. Uh, but it also comes with room for you to finish that crit boost off if you happen to be someone who's lucky enough to have a crit jewel. So this is kind of like for people who don't have everything, but they do have some of the decorations, right? Same with the Mighty Jewel, same with the Tenderizer Jewel, right? Especially the Mighty Jewel, I understand that that's kind of one of, the, I believe that one is Rarity 7. So, you know, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Same with the Tenderizer, maybe you have it, maybe you don't. But the point is you're able to finish these skills off if you do. Other than that, I just brought Vitality, which Vitality is always a pretty strong skill to be bringing with you. All right, and now the last three builds are going to assume that you have most of the decorations or just a lot of strong ones, right? This is for people who have been playing a lot 
if you are still curious about using this build, you may be able to get by, but you might not be able to do something like complete the attack boost. Let's go ahead and start talking about it. So usually what I do is I talk about how I prioritize skills, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that for this one. You'll notice it comes with a number of extremely efficient armor pieces, the Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, Empress Male Beta, and Kirin Long Arms Gamma. Those are three extremely efficient armor pieces, and this is basically going to be a peak performance build. We're also going to have a build for Agitator, and we're going to have a build for Resentment as well. See, when I was working with the Kolv Teroth Blitz video, and I did a peak performance build, I realized peak performance isn't ideal in every situation. Like, when you're fighting Valhazak, of course you're not going to want peak performance, right? You're going to take DOT the whole time. Same with Lunastra, same with Teostra, and maybe another monster, I don't know. Maybe a monster, one of the future monsters. We'll have to see, right? Like the Behemoth. But yeah, so I realized peak performance isn't everything, and so this is the peak performance build, but we're going to move on to taking a look at the Resentment build and the Agitator build. Now, for... Choosing priority skills, free element ammo up obviously is really important here. You'll notice I don't have Xenogiva Divinity. That's because I don't really think you need it because the reload speed is decent on this weapon, right? So no Xenogiva Divinity, and that means we take the rest of the skills and really focus it into getting damage. So we have crit boost, weakness exploit, and peak performance. And those are kind of like your big damage dealers. Next, you'll notice we have normal shots, attack boost 7, and free element slash ammo up. Those are like your auxiliary damage dealers. Finally, you also noticed that I was able to bring special ammo boost, and that's going to allow your Wyvern Blast to do a little more damage as well. So this is a really strong build. This is like a speedrunner's build. All right, next up, you'll notice this is the Resentment build. And what we're doing here is we have the Diablos Neros male beta giving us a bunch of Resentment. I also have one Fuhrer jewel. Now, I would have tried to build it higher, but I didn't really have a lot of room for it. I would have had to give up either the Crit jewel or the Tenderizer jewel, and I wasn't willing to do that just for Resentment. So we're really just playing along with Resentment level 4, which is still nice. And one of the reasons why, you know, with this particular weapon, Karma, we're considering something like the Peak Performance, or the Resentment, or the Agitator, it's because we already come with so much affinity that we don't necessarily have to have maximum might. We're already going to get pretty good affinity, especially if you went with the affinity augmentation, like I mentioned all the way at the beginning of the video. Just having, like, default, you know, 40% affinity, 5 more, you know, affinity from attack, and then 50% more affinity from weakness exploit, you're pretty much set, which is how we're getting away with this, right? That's one of the ways we're getting away with this. So we have attack boost 4 and resentment 4, no health recovery augmentation, that would kind of spoil it, remember? Right? You don't want to heal up when you're using resentment, you want to stay in the red. And then we got resentment giving us an extra little attack boost. So this is a pretty strong build as well. All right, and here's my Agitator build. You'll notice I wasn't able to get Crit Boost to level 3. You could probably give up that extra level of Tenderizer if you wanted to and just add another Crit Jewel if you wanted to. I don't exactly know the exact math behind that, which one would be better. You know, the higher affinity from Weakness Exploit or the higher damage from Crit Boost. Maybe, uh, maybe it breaks even or maybe it's in favor of having more Weakness Exploit. It's hard to say, but you do have Agitator and Agitator gives you a nice little bit of affinity as well. So that might actually make up for missing a level of weakness exploit. It's up to you. I'll allow you guys to mess around with it, but you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm using the Kolv Teroth Fury Beta Helmet. That's going to give me a level of Agitator as well as a level of Free Element, right? And then you'll notice I have the Nergigante Vambraces Beta. You can bring the Nergigante Vambraces Alpha if you really do intend for that armor piece to come up with an attack skill, right? You'll notice I just filled the empty slot with an attack jewel anyways, right? That's my point. And then you'll also notice I'm able to get another level of the free element using the Kolv Teroth Malice Beta. So I've got the free element taken care of, and that's why the charm on this build is the Challenger Charm, which is going to give me two more levels of Agitator, and that's how I'm maxing Agitator to level 5. Alright, so that is my Agitator build. Okay, and that covers all of the builds for Karma. I didn't really have any others. If you wanted to make any build recommendations, please just let me know in the comment section. Also, if you've made it this far in the video, I just want to mention that I do have a top 5 heavy bow guns tier list if you're curious about taking a look at the heavy bow guns. 
All right, let's move on to talking a little bit about the Karma Light Bow Gun playstyle, right? We want to know, well, so we know how to build this weapon, right? We want to know how should I be playing with this weapon? So the first thing I want to mention is the fact that you have sleep ammo. The fact that you have sleep ammo on a light bow gun is really good. Basically, light bow guns, well, heavy bow guns are great with sleep ammo as well. Like when you put the monster to sleep with the heavy bow gun, you usually get to wake them up with a wyvern ammo, which does a ton of damage. With the light bow guns, what you get to do is you get to put all of your wyvern blasts down. So what I would recommend doing is right away when you go to fight the monster put him to sleep and then get all your wyvern blast down so that your wyvern blast is on recharge that's efficient having it on recharge right so get your wyvern blast down put the monster to sleep put your mega barrel bombs down and get a nice big sleep bomb on the monster starting out that's really going to help you because the normal ammo in my opinion on light bow guns well on all of the bow guns normal ammo still kind of struggles to beat out spread ammo so it is a good idea to take advantage of that sleep ammo right in the beginning all right, and then after that, the, the main thing that normal ammo really exceeds at is being able to shoot a weak spot on a monster's body that's maybe a little further away. Like, so with spread ammo, if you're trying to shoot Nergigante's wings, it could be a little awkward. Some of your shots could be out of range. It could be out of the critical range. But if you're using normal ammo, it's actually really easy. You don't even have to be that close to the wings. That's one of the best examples of what normal ammo excels at. Because, you know, Nergigante will have spikes growing on his wings, and so you need to shoot them. Right? You, like, you have to shoot them before they turn black. And, yeah, with the spread ammo, it could be trickier. With the normal ammo, it's a lot easier, right? But you're trading that off with doing higher damage with the spread. So normal ammo is definitely a specific kind of play style and easier than the spread shot. I would say it's definitely safer and easier than the spread ammo, and that does have to count for something. And you're still able to get your wyvern blasts out, which deal a decent amount of damage as well. Whenever you knock down a monster, that's when you should be using your wyvern blast. You, you mostly don't want to just randomly put the wyvern blast down because you'll end up wasting it. But if you can knock the monster over, then you can set the wyvern blast right next to their head and then shoot them in the head, have the bullet go over the wyvern blast. That'll cause the wyvern blast to explode, dealing a whole bunch of damage. All right, and then other than that, just don't forget to use your paralysis ammo as well. Make sure you get at least one proc. The way these ailments are going to work, you're going to get one proc of the ailment, and then after that, you shouldn't be trying anymore because you don't really have enough of the ammo in order to cause it to proc twice. And that's it. The Carmelite Bowgun is one of the least complicated bowguns in the game, which is another reason why you should get out there, build the weapon, and give it a try. Alright, well that's everything I have to say about the weapon. I think for the tier rating, we're going to go ahead and give it an A tier rating. The Terrath Blitz shots got an A+. Karma's going to get an A just because it's not going to deal the same damage for people who want to speed run, right? It's just not going to get as much damage out. So it's not the best speed running weapon, but it's much better because you can just build it right away and it does come with the ailments, which is still really good for multiplayer. Alright, well I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.